Welcome to Natural Habitat Adventures, Daily Dose of Nature. Today's topic, NatHab's Grand India Adventure, Wildlife and More, presented by NatHab Expedition Leader, Arpita Dutta. I'm your host, Rob Mess. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Over to you, Arpita. Thank you. Thank you so much Rob, for the lovely introduction and uh, welcome everyone and thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, just Rob mentioned that it's a, a weekend and it's more like people love to move out but still all of who all of you are here I'm really grateful and thankful because all of your presence keep me going and bring out a lot of stories from all about wildlife and the places. So yeah, and uh, when we talk about wildlife and because I do India, Nepal and Bhutan, so of course I thought just I ended up uh, the trips uh, uh, for this season. And uh, I was I'm so excited and got to got to see so many things and the trips all the trips went so well. Uh, we got great sightings as well and uh, people were happy. And of course, when you all guests are happy, that makes me feel more happy. And I think that's my like a uh, energy booster. So yeah, I'll just present a little more about the Grand India Adventure because. Uh, when we talk about India or Nepal or Bhutan, all these places, I think we, while we do all these activities, uh, doing safaris, uh, watching uh, like animals, uh, get to know about the forest, with that, we get to see and realize or observe a lot of things happening around us. And when we talk about the Grand India Adventure, it's an adventure of a lot of things. Because Indian history stands like that. You know, it's filled with incredible stories of thriving civilization, religious and cultures, right? And India civilization is one of the oldest that we know. So it brought, uh, according to that, it brought a lot of uh, things and a lot of changes and a lot of uh, knowledge we are sharing uh, today or we get to see them today. So, and because of its rich biodiversity and the richness of the land as well, India was invaded more than 200 times. Oh my gosh. And in different period, so imagine in different eras, people are coming from outside to see this land, to be in this land, and most of them try to rule over this land. So doing all these things with a mix and match, there was a cult cultural exchange also happened. And you know, we have like, right now we have, uh, 22 official language and of course English is one we mostly communicate with all the official works because of course 300 years is not a less like a, not a matter of joke or it's not less time to be in, get influenced by the language and of course we did that and but the major like 150 major languages are spoken and you know with too many languages, there are thousands of dialects. And with that, there are 19, I mean, 1900 plus dialects which are used. Even in my uh, state, if we go to different areas, the dialect they use to speak, sometimes it's difficult for me to understand. So it's that uh, different or that diverse. And uh, and with that, it has the ethnicity and we have like uh, 28 states, nine union territories, and we have major religions, but mostly like Hindu, uh, then Christianity and Muslims, Sikh, and 
lot more. So with all this diverse language, religion, ethnicity, we bring it together and we call it a democratic country. And uh, honestly, India is too big to be ruled by one government, but still it's going. So yeah, there are a lot of things, changes. We are always on the news and especially nowadays for our population. Um, so yeah. Uh, and uh, when you enter or from there, from that part of the world or people who never uh, visited India before or haven't read about it, they have a different idea about the whole uh, country because mostly we get to hear from, uh, you know, we get in touch with people from uh, the rest of the world and say that, do the do the uh, i mean wildlife just roam around here and there do you see them on roads but of course i mean it's a it's a mixed bag i would say so the grand india uh, wildlife adventure how we start we actually cover a lot of uh, cities and we get mostly in the central india in from the northern part to central india and from central india to the north eastern part of India and this area is one of the biodiversity zone and uh, from there we start from Delhi and this map on the right hand side top is the central India's uh, map where we visit the two famous national park which is Kanha National Park and Bandhavgar National Park and when we go down uh, like on the uh, down uh, on the right is the northeastern side, which is this area. We visit the Kaziranga National Park, which is very famous for the greater one horn rhino population. And actually, it has the largest population of greater one horn rhino. So with that, we do travel with a lot of uh, like the transfer happened with flight, with uh, car, and uh, if we do the Taj extension, we get to experience the train journey, but it's a sophisticated one, not the local train that you see that people are hanging from the door. Uh, so, but you get an amazing uh, feeling through, uh, when the train passes through the countryside and stuff. So it's, it's, it's all about like how we bring this whole uh, journey uh, and make a beautiful experience in your life. When you go back, you can talk not only about the wildlife, but all about the culture and heritage, and of course, the local transport. Sometimes, uh, and you know, first, uh, we always say that uh, we Indians, we really don't know about personal space. So you hardly would find that the vehicles would be far off or the people who are standing. Uh, you will you will always feel that uh, somebody's hand or somebody's shoulders is touching your body. So this is very natural. And uh, but there is no bad intention, but this is how we are. So with that, when you land in the Delhi airport, it's it's of course it's it has a very um, like uh, a light and the construction and everything. It looks like more like the, how the urban development has happened, and because it's a capital city, so of course it has a generous view which you get a different uh, idea but it's almost in the same in the different uh, i mean in the airport this is the immigration center so just to let you know um and then you come out from the airport there's a beautiful stretch of garden more than a one uh, 1.5 kilometers and you get to see beautiful flowers and you never know that how beautiful the city looks like and when you enter, when you cross, when you head towards your hotel, you would see like store, uh, like skyscrapers, beautiful buildings, uh, tarmac road with gardening and stuff. It's very, um, you know, ornamented uh, city, how you get to see this is how you would feel. And then you enter the Taj Mahal Hotel. It's a it's a hotel run by the Taj Group of hotels, uh, who are known for their hospitality and their service. And the 
you know, personal relationship they build up with the guest and the people who are working there. And of course, um, Taj has become very popular after the 2611, I mean, uh, all the attacks and stuff. So yes, but they they are amazing when when it comes to hosting the guest. And then we, from the next, the day we, I mean, the, star, uh, the trip starts is the Delhi tour where we go. And from here, we get a beautiful small bus and a very uh, comfortable bus with a big uh, window where you can get to see the whole city, how it's happening. And there you see is the Rashtrapati Bhavan where the president stay here. So here, all the decisions, this is where our president stay as well as uh, the office is. So all the decisions, all the political views are coming from this uh, particular building. And from there, we get a shock. Trust me, it's a shock. I thought that whether I should uh, give you this picture or talk about this, but it's amazing to listen or to experience it. It's a memory because when you get entered the old Delhi part, which was known as the Shah Jahanabad, when in the mid of 16th century, uh, the Mughal dynasty uh, uh, ruler uh, Shah Jahan shifted his uh, capital uh, here. And uh, from there, the buildings, the structures, I mean, it's, I mean, Old Delhi uh, is all about a blend of history and modernization. Because of course there was space, so people started, you know, living uh, there. And of course they cannot build uh, Taj Mahal for themselves. So there are buildings, but look at the lanes, you know, they're full of thrifty stores like food market and uh, in Delhi and in this part of in mostly in part of India we get big weddings you know those gala weddings uh, happens I and mean, who can afford it but in this area every people can afford according to their, uh, you know, capability. So they have varieties of things and you will get to see ornaments, wearing dress, party wares, a uh, lot of uh, religious stuffs and a lot more. I mean, getting into that lane itself is an adventure because you have seen all this tangled hair, but nothing has happened till date. and if anyone can drive in that particular area, trust me, that person can drive in any place which is congested or, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a driving test. And also over here uh, in, this, in this area, look at, look at the people. It's mostly walking areas, but we here in Old Delhi, we get down from the bus and we get into the rickshaw uh, which is pulled by people. You see here, they are pulling the rickshaws and we take a full trip to this beautiful narrow lanes, which are known as gullies. And from Old Delhi, we visit the Jama Masjid, one of the largest mosques. And here, uh, like the Muslim traditionally gather for Friday communal uh, play, uh, prayer. And to enter here, we uh, have to follow some norms, but whenever you visit, of course, uh, that would be taken care of. But this structure, they are so old and uh, people over there are like freely moving and you can move anywhere, few places which uh, is uh, photography is prohibited, but it has an amazing story altogether. And from there to Jama Masjid, here is a lady you see here, we get we get many uh, city tour guides, but she's one of my favorite, Poonam. And she's been explaining the history of this area. And from there, we went to Gurudwara, uh, which is a Sikh, um, uh, like the religious site for the Sikh. And in this Gurudwara, what I like about is, uh, and I definitely love to visit no matter how many times I have been there, there, 
uh, thought. I mean, their way of preaching uh, not only Sikhism, but humanism. Because over here you see, this is called Langar and it, or the community kitchen. And over here, pe uh, I mean, over here, people get to have food for free. And that is also from 30 to 50,000 people per day. And over here, they can, I mean, anybody can volunteer to make those food in this huge, in this huge, uh, you know, pots and all, which is done by machine. But this machine has been installed after COVID. Initially, it was do done all by hand into, uh, in big, big i mean i can sit in that uh, you know utensil they were so big so yeah and over here there is no caste creed whether you are poor or rich everybody will sit together and they will finish their lunch and then they will they will go outside and the next batch will get in more than 700 to 900 people can sit at the same place i mean at, at a time so imagine how beautiful that is and where the prayer room is it's beautiful but there we cannot take photographs inside so i couldn't show where where you have this golden you know artworks are there and there is the holy book which has been uh, i mean which is there and there are saints who have been singing those verses which are all about humanism and the good work what you do and um, everything about the preaching and uh, with that we uh, travel uh, like after the old Delhi trip we come back we take a rest we do the orientation of the forest and get amazing dinner at Taj Mahal hotel and then we in the early in the morning we head back to central India for our wildlife adventure and this is uh, from the Delhi airport and we are heading to Jabalpur. Our first stop uh, through from where we start uh, uh, head our wildlife adventure thing. And from Jabalpur, we first head to Bandavgarh National Park. So after looking at the city, the New Delhi uh, landscape, which is pretty ornamented. And then you have the old Delhi with a lot of, you know, crowd, dust, uh, and uh, sound. People everywhere, you would see only black heads, I mean, um, like that. After that, as soon as we re reach Jabalpur and we start heading towards uh, Bandavgar, we cross so many fields. And depending on the season, we have mustard, which is yellow in color, and you will see patches of huge yellow fields, which, which you cross. And then you have rice, wheat, and corn so many things uh, would be would you will cross and there would be small uh, hamlets of villages and you will see kids running around so it's a beautiful scenario all about and when you enter more close towards the forest you get to see a lot of cow of course uh, on the road and in delhi new uh, in the old delhi you might get to see but not in new delhi you would see cow cows on the road how you get to see it or how the documentaries are done but of course in the rural village these cows are everywhere and when we talk about central india we have we cannot like escape without mentioning the indigenous people uh, the tribes uh, the main the two main tribes the bega and gond uh, tribe of uh, india and they are the forest dwelling people like uh, aborigines and uh, you know who i mean they have been sharing the forest with the big cat and the other wildlife species for like generations and uh, with that and this is how i mean the more you go close towards the uh, village area towards the forest you will see the blue blue houses and brown mud walls with the tiled roof this is how their houses look like but trust me they are so clean 
I mean, I don't know even my room is so clean or not. It's uh, always my clothes are somewhere, uh, and especially my books are mostly on my bed with me. Uh, but there, if you go, if you enter, you will find that they live in such a delightful way, and the people out there are so good. Um, with that, this is this is how they're festive looks are and these are some jewelries they wear and it has a very uh, like close look to the African tribal you know ornaments and how they do the get-ups and stuff but their dances and everything is so and they have rituals or they have dances for every occasion even during harvesting uh, if someone is getting married when they have a baby shower when uh, uh, anything i mean if any any or any uh, worship they're doing generally they worship the forest uh there are no idols so they worship trees mountains rivers it's it's amazing to be around them to understand their way of life because they understand this biodiversity they understand the natural things much better than us and it is going uh, like generation after generation and this is how uh, in beggars, a person who has big land or who is the owner of a big land and they have a big well generally. So they store this water have been raised because uh, they need to. So they're, I mean, uh, when they are doing their cultivation, they need it. And uh, sometimes, of course, I mean, people from their neighbors, they do come and take water from here. But otherwise, uh, mostly uh, people, I mean, if you see small house and stuff with a small land, they generally don't have a big will like this. And with this, uh, with Central India, when we talk with the dry land or deciduous forest, we cannot uh, like think about uh, or we can think without the mahua tree, which is one of my favorite as well, because it produces this mahua flower. You see these yellow flowers. These tribal people, they collect this yellow flower for many things, not only the flower, the seed, fruit, leaves, everything in that tree is, you know, valuable, economically valuable for them. They sell these flowers and they make also an amazing wine out of this mahua so whenever you are coming to central india or grand india adventure do try this uh, liquor it's very refined it's very nice it doesn't give you hangover but the flower has a very distinct smell which you can definitely taste uh, when you take the first sip and uh, sometimes uh, when we stop uh, at some at some places and we see mahua flowers we're about to drop we sometimes pick up the flower and start eating and, and then you just uh, i mean especially the in the forest not only the tribes the langur sloth bear deer they also feed on this like delicious and juicy mahua flowers. And with this mahua flower, they have neem tree, mango, um, jamun, a lot of, I mean, they will have their own kitchen garden and a lot more so that they can sustain themselves. And with that, when you enter in on the wall of the house or you, whenever we get into the, inside the lodge, you will get to see this kind of paintings. Uh, these are the cone paintings and uh, or rather I can describe it as uh, online work. You know, lines are used in such a way that it conveys a sense of movement to the still image. I mean, this is a picture when you stand in front because there are big portraits are there. When you stand in front, you will find, uh, I mean, if you just look into it for like for a moment or for a few seconds, you will find, <coughs> um, I'm so sorry. Um, so you will find that there there is a, it seems like there is a moving, moving things going on. So it's a beautiful gond art and there are gond uh, painters and uh, right now they have been like even went abroad like outside india this painting is so unique and uh, beautiful 
and they describe a lot about the forest. It's mostly about the forest. Hardly we get to see any uh, human figure in their paintings. Um, and with that, as I was talking about the celebration, we get to see the Vega dance. And trust me, when all this uh, percussions, the drums and everything start, uh, you know, getting into the rhythm, you cannot put your feet or your step like just without moving. Your feet will stop tapping because it's so there is no mics and all but at night when we sit around the fire in the winter and they would circle around and do the song and the dance it's just incredible it actually flows make you flow with the rhythm and if you if you like to uh, definitely or rather you should get uh, with them just get down with them and just do the beggar dance uh, and i'm sure that it's gonna be another signature thing in your whole trip and with this uh and with the forest adventure uh while doing all the safaris and stuff we have some time where you can we have a little time where you could skip uh, uh like maybe a couple of hours safari in the morning and you can do a village visit as well to get to see how they are living their life not only during when you are passing through their house but you can actually go inside their house and uh, the naturalist or when we would go we would describe you how they cook how they keep their things and that is that is an experience with the wildlife and the tribes of course they they are the part of uh, the wildlife as well i mean wildlife adventure so when we get into the forest it's green it's beautiful it's thick and we do safari in this kind of uh, open vehicles uh, this is a picture from kanha and early in the morning when it is winter you would see the mist and uh, the vapor is coming out from the water and it's uh, the picture doesn't do the justice but when you see it it's a bliss to your it's a treat to your eye and we move ahead we see beautiful patches of the forest and in the forest without the picnic breakfast it's a little incomplete so we definitely head to that and uh, we lay out the breakfast and we all come together to do our breakfast and sometimes in some places we have to go inside the room to do the breakfast because there are a lot of langurs who would like to join us and that would be a little inconvenient so that's the reason why we are inside but yeah it's a mix match thing what you get to experience and when we talk about food let me tell you the Grand India Adventure or any place you come with Matab, uh, even in Nepal, Bhutan, you uh, actually go back with an extra belly, with the extra happiness in your mind. Because there is so much of food and they are so delicious that in after every season, I put on a lot of uh, like kilos unfortunately and it takes me another few months to lose them uh, so after this it's all about the jungle it's not only about you know the wildlife sighting it's about the patience the waiting the the connection we develop uh, after doing quite a few safaris uh, inside the jungle because then you understand that what the forest is trying to narrate you, trying to tell you. Either you get to listen to the calls of the forest or, you know, the leaves are falling where there is an animal which is giving a distress call or there is a mating call or the birds which are singing during the uh, their mating season. And then, of course, there are a lot and lot of animals but in the last trip, in uh, we get we really had a good sighting of the big cat. We definitely look for a lot of adventure, but of course we all have 
this majestic cat's picture in our mind. So yes, we have seen the walking tiger, a sleeping tiger, a yoga instructor, uh, a lot of acrobatic. It was it was just showing off that how flexible uh, he was. And then, of course, the, the lady who was patrolling uh, into some someone uh, someone else territory to show or to just trying to develop or its uh, territory because this was her territory long back. And I have seen her for when she was only a year old. Right now she's around five to six years old. And uh, here and with that, it's not only about the big cat, it's about the other, other uh, wildlife and the most entertaining, which can give you non-stop carve on your face is are the lungbores. Their way of living, their way of doing things, they when the troops are together, it's really fun watching them. I mean, you, you can spend hours just looking at them, that what they're doing, their curiosity, uh, their mischievous uh, behavior, it's really fascinating, fascinating. And of course, they are very important because when they get to see a predator from the top of the tree, they give a distress call like, <coughs> like this. And then you know that, okay, there is a cat, there is a predator around and you can follow the call to know that where the predator is walking and trust me sometimes, and sometimes or most of the time, we get to see the big cat. And with that, with the jungle fowl, they also give uh, uh, the distress call and they are one of the most colorful. So I always say that it's like a color palette. Um, with that, there is a, a big, uh, the, the largest in the Bovidian family, the Indian gore. I always say that is the Swazenaker of uh, the forest. And there is the hard brown Barasinga. Right now, apart from Kanha, you don't get to see them anywhere else in the world. And uh, here is a leopard. Sorry for the picture, but this is how they blend. There are so many times happens that people cross and they don't get to see the leopard because say, they are master in camouf uh, camouflaging in, in the forest, in the, in the ground or in the, on the tree. And with that, uh, when, we, uh, when we are going through definitely, uh, you know, with the tribes, uh, because right now a lot of thing has changed. The new generation, they mostly go out to get some work or they want to engage into some different work or earn more money for their sustainability than because right now, People, those tribes cannot stay inside the forest. They are outside the forest. In Bandhavgarh, there are near about 74 villages have been relocated outside the forest. So, of course, their lifestyle and way of, uh, you know, dealing things have changed. So, the conservation works here because, because of the tourism, because of the conservation tourism, a lot of people get engaged into guiding uh, the local guides or who are working with the forest department and then the people who are working in different lodges almost more than 70 percent uh, people are from the local so those are the tribes so the people the person who is serving you is a tribe from that particular area and trust me they they might not know the sophistication of you know they they have learned they have uh, they have acquired the knowledge that how to place the plate or your fork or spoon, how to make the tea coffee in, in, a, in a different way, but they know how to host the guest because, you know, they, they give you water with a smile, you would feel that warmth in that, that you cannot teach, so which I like. And because of this conservation tourism, because all this, I mean, uh, NHA is there, and NHA do a lot more, you know, uh, regarding tippings and taking care of the people who are working closely with NHA had, uh, had given a beautiful impact because they are also learning, they are also earning for their for a better life 
and with that and that not only in uh, central india but it also happens in uh, the northeastern side wherever wherever energy goes and other other uh, travel uh, uh, tourism companies as well i mean this whole tourism sector in these areas uh, are giving a livelihood to the people who are attached to this forest or the national parks and of course that's a weird picture of me but uh, this is how we end up uh, our uh, central india's uh, wildlife uh, adventure tours and of course we had two vehicles so i had to show uh, the vehicles were not uh, like of course they were they were standing and uh, i had to show some gymnastic after getting inspired by the by the tiger yeah and uh, then we head to the northeastern uh, side via uh, Kolkata, which is here in West Bengal. So we take a flight, then we head back here. And the Kazinanga National Park is mostly, uh, it's developed on the bank of river Brahmaputra. So it has grassland, woodland, uh, and then it has little part of the mountain forest. So it has a beautiful mixed vegetation and that's the reason why there are too many different types of animals and near about, it gets around 700 species of birds during the migratory season. So if you love birding, if, you, if you're interested, uh, this forest can give you, like when you go out, they can give you more than 200 to 300 bird species in your list i mean and you do grand india together you would definitely see near about 400 species for sure um then with that when we enter assam the first thing we get introduced with the beautiful tea garden uh and these tea gardens are like uh, stretched across i mean till the part you can see and assam and total total northeast has many many tribes and in assam we have mostly the missing uh boro all these all these tribes uh and karbian uh karbic uh so they have different way of living but mostly they are related to each other and they look pretty different than the rest of the part of India because of their eyes and features. Though I look more like a northeastern side, so I really get blend well with them. And maybe for so many years, I mean, more than 20 years, I have been like uh, going to north, staying there, working with my conservation work, as well as um, taking trips out there. Uh, so maybe I have become like that and I'm, I feel so good. <laughs> sometimes they speak in their own language just to because they don't understand that i'm not from there but i i like about that part so you see uh they mostly leave uh, because around brahmaputra akaziranga gets flood every year and around brahmaputra so uh you would see all the houses which will be the tribes they would be uh leaving in this machan kind of area even where we stay in Kaziranga, it's like a Machan Lodge. Uh, not like this, that's a very beautiful place and ra rather out of every uh, area, I think that is one of my favorite because where the lodge is and how the lodge is, it has a very uh, natural and rustic and this is how you feel that you are around the forest because you get to hear so many beautiful uh, calls, um, even at night, the frogs, the cricket, it will, it, it is always have the feel that yes, you are still on the adventure. And this is how the tea tribal, uh, like uh, tea garden uh, people work, like from morning to afternoon. And there are, because of the presence of the river, uh, fishing is another uh, important, uh, like their uh, work over there. And not only this fishing, they differ, they, use different kind of uh, fishing nets to do fish uh, to do fishing and uh, we might get to taste some river fish where while we were staying there uh, so if you love fish so definitely you're going to enjoy all the cuisine out there and uh, so of course this is like our showstopper 
at the Kaziranga National Park, our greater one on Rhino. And uh, you see, this is how the forest looked like. This is a grassland, of course. Uh, it's just after, um, you know, the forest, uh, like control forest fire and stuff. So a little bit of grass has come out. There is the bush, then you have the tree and you have the little mountain forest out here. And here are our rhinos. Um, they are mostly solitary, but the mother and the calf stay together. Uh, and some other female might uh, like move around. If there are plenty of food, they generally don't waste their energy by, I mean, with fighting. And this is my, the most favorite animal are the elephants. If you get to see them, uh, it's been, it's amazing. Of course, they are smaller than the African uh, cousins, but uh, their behavior, their way of doing things, you feel that the giant, uh, the hugeness, but that gentleness at the same time. And if, and if you get to see a herd together, it's better to stop and just stay for a little far away and just to observe them, that how they are trying to communicate uh, with each other. It, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be around them. And uh, of course, uh, with that, if we get to see this bird, the great hornbill, uh, it's a... I think it's a complete story uh, when we talk about the woodland forest and stuff, uh, because this is so huge that even if you if you get to hear them from a distance and if it flies off over your head, you actually get to hear the whipping sound of the wings like hoof, 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 hoof. I mean, and that's and the color. It's, it's so bright, it's so brilliant that it's, I mean, if you have been to Borneo, you might have seen this bird as well. And do you have any idea what we are looking at? Because everybody's, your head is, and trust me, after, after a few moments, your, your neck starts uh, hurting, but again, you take a small break and you look up. And this is the place where we get to see the Hula Gibbon, the one and only ape of India. And they hardly come down because 80% time they would be on the top of the tree. Uh, they, they, they don't come out and they live in a family. And because of, uh, you know, habitat loss, they are in, uh, like, they are in, they are towards threat because not even 200 meter they cross if there are no branches or no patch of forest in in between and looking at the gibbon and if we are very lucky or if we can wait or if the sun is shining right uh, at that point of time listening to hula gibbon is a treat to your ear i mean suddenly you feel, oh gosh, it's an alarm clock that we are in the forest. You know, the whole, it seems like the whole forest is, uh, you know, welcoming you. Because when they start communicating with one family to the other family, and you can actually understand that, uh, you know, they are also calling, but they are talking from a very, they are giving uh, out calls from a, from a distance. But that communication to understand, it makes amazing. And after the Hula Gibbon, uh, in that road, you might get to see all these uh, ladies who are going to the tea garden to get uh, the tea. And from the tea garden owner, they provide them vehicle for the pick up and drop. And that's been amazing. And this time I saw them, could see them. I, I know that, but this time I could see them. So I thought that, yeah, this is this is very nice. And look at their face. I mean, all of them are smiling. And uh, this photo has been taken from, I mean, through the glass of uh, the vehicle. But look at their faces. I mean, they're shy, but they're still smiling. Somebody is doing hi. So they're, they're very pleasant, you know. You feel happy, uh, definitely happy around them. And then we enter another patch of the forest in Kaziranga itself which is very thick and gives you a lot of idea about it. And let me tell you, Bandhavgar, Kanha, Kaziranga, all these has different zones. And whenever you visit different zones, you see, you get to see a different part of the forest, different landscape of the forest. That absolutely makes you feel that 
it's a new day for you like every every safari is a new new safari for you and of course with the animals it makes it more interesting and this is where we end uh, our kaziranga the grand india trip and uh, this is this is where we come down to see the gangetic dolphin which is a critically endangered species and uh, here we sit together on a boat ride which is very pleasant after the turmoil or the bumpy rides we get from central india to kaziranga and this boat ride i think soothes it out a lot and with that we end up there we fly back to delhi or from there we go out from our destination and we when we are doing an touch extension from delhi we go to agra by a train which i was talking about and that day we visit taj mahal but in the afternoon uh, why i why i mentioned because we visit taj mahal in the morning in the next day morning i mean before the sunrise and there there is a saying that with the time the taj changes its color and i am not saying it or i didn't believe it unless and until i have seen it by myself and uh, it's the wonder it's one of the wonder of the world and when you see it like this it's a monument when you enter see the carvings the craftsmanship and the whole structure the geometry it's incredible i mean what a structure every time i visit every time i learn something new and every time i have that awestruck feeling that how could few people do this kind of uh, architecture with so much of you know um, calculation with so much of mathematics and of course mathematics is never uh like a good friend of mine so it's always gone over i mean it's like all all the mathematical clues go tangent through my brain but this monument has given me like an amazing feeling that we have this thing in india for these all these reasons i sometimes feel that uh india got invaded by a lot of uh, you know invaders so some are for good definitely so with that um we go to red fort as well where uh, uh where shah jahan have been prisoned by his son aurangzeb and there is a place in this fort from where you get to see taj mahal if the sky is clear you will get an amazing view because he wanted uh to see his uh, beloved wife's uh, uh place uh from that from that area so he he stayed over there and um, taj has so many stories but it's better to come and listen to the stories because uh in this short time if i start the history and end uh that will that will take a lot of time but yes after the red fort we visit a lot of uh, areas a lot of uh, to see the craftsmanship we get to see in agra especially these are like all you know the gold and silver uh, thread work they they are i mean oh, i don't know how much you can understand through the pictures but when you see the person who is working or how um like intricate the work are uh, it's it's in, immensely beautiful and these all have because with the moguls a lot of persian uh, touch has come to india so all these works have uh, these are all velvet cloths and they have been doing all this and there there are i mean this is not completed and there they will uh like put all those semi precious and precious stones uh into this into this uh, artwork with that we have we visit uh the um marble marble area as well to see more work that how the uh, 
how the people and they are actually working generation after generations um and there this glue you say uh i mean uh, this person who is uh, showing the, with the black uh, shirt they always say that they even he doesn't know the combination or the secret of this glue only the master who uh, from that generation who has worked i mean generation after generation the master only they know the formula of this glue and once it is attached uh, within 15 minutes uh, you if you if you have done something wrong uh within 15 minutes you have to rectify otherwise it is glued for the rest of the life why i'm showing this picture for another reason you see all the stone works let me give you a better uh, view all these petals this thin lines like this brown light brown brown they are different stones and this is the whole artwork you have rather more specific more narrow i mean even even somewhere like even thinner than your hair uh are there in taj mahal when you go inside and you get to see and you get to see all this artwork and uh, of course uh, because uh, because uh, we have this persian thing so you would see a lot of art which has been done with the natural view what are the scenarios you know the royal uh, to get the royal activities which are uh, like happening and of course uh, they this uh, in the on the 17th uh, century this influential this western influence were been there in the pictures and the architectures whether it's a braided work or in the marble it has shown a great craftsmanship and with that we leave agra and we head back to delhi and we say bye to that and of course we bring back home with a lot a lot of memories and i hope if any day you visit this is this is a very short time to explain everything but uh, this it's you have to to believe it or to see it you have to be here to understand and to make yourself happy and getting an incredible and exciting uh, experience uh, all together thank you so much for listening to me rob i'm ready to take up questions all right thank you now before we start in with the question and answer session i would like to remind everyone that you can submit your questions via the question field in your control panel so let's get to these questions so how much tipping is expected while you're on the tour uh sorry how much tipping is expected to happen uh while you're on the tour how much do you tip the guys and and those kinds of uh to all this uh like all the people who are working that is correct okay so it it depends on that uh so it, it's i mean uh, that nh already fix uh fix it so uh, at least we get minimum like 10 to uh, 15 uh, 1000 so how is it coming to uh usd i have to calculate drop <laughs> just a moment uh so if i'm saying 15 okay so yeah so 187 uh, is it 187 no 15000 indian rupee so how it how it would come like 200 to 300 dollars for sure it's coming gotcha good to know i'm sure uh, the uh, adventure concierge can also help out to answer those mm -hmm. questions as well um so let's get to another one so what is the best time of year to go to see birds if i really wanted to see them migrating Oh great uh, if you if you come down between uh, uh considering kaziranga uh, so i would say it is it is very good to come during uh january february and by first week of march if you if you want to do uh, extensive birding 
Great. Thank you for that. So if I have some physical challenges or some disabilities and I'm not able to, say, <laughs> sit on the floor by myself, should I bring a wheelchair or my own chair or would you be able to help me do those things? Don't worry, uh, this sounds very, uh, I don't know, but it sounds very um, non-dramatic, but trust me, we are here to help you out. You just need to say that you need you need some assistance, that's it. Uh, I know whoever is coming for all this trip, you are amazingly capable and we really don't need much physical effort for this Grand India. And if we need to do, uh, if you need some assistance, just let us know. Or by the time we will get to know each other, we know that when you need it. And uh, don't worry at all, you will be in safe hands, whether it's me or any of the ELs who are leading it. That is good to know, thank you. Now, what about vaccinations? Do I need to get vaccinated for anything specific if I'm traveling to India? Uh, not really. Oh, that's good to know too. Thank okay, you. another uh, good good question, very good question. Uh, one thing I'm just uh, saying because I have experienced this because before you come to India, you take uh, the mal malaria pills, right? Uh, and you continue that. So some few people got uh, stomach upset because of that pill as well. But let me tell you this, uh, we don't get much mosquitoes uh, around wherever we travel. So if it is not very necessary, you can skip that too. But for safer side you do, but also keep some, you know, uh, like good uh, uh, probiotics with you, which you are comfortable with, though we carry as well. But you keep that, that in case if uh, anything happens so that you can uh, make yourself comfortable. Great, thank you. <clears throat> What, so what was the name of the fruit uh, that you showed? There was a large amount of them on the ground. Those are flowers. Those are mahua flowers. It's called mahua. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so one of our guests wants to know if you saw the wild dog dole on your trip this year. Uh, this, this trip we didn't. So if I wanted but, to, oh, I'm sorry. I think it happened with other uh, other trips as I mean, uh, there are too many trips happened uh, uh, Grand India, but there are like one or two sightings happened uh, of Dole, uh, though they are now uh, because we don't get to see those large packs anymore and they're critically endangered as well. So the sighting uh, has uh, become very rare, very rare sighting. Uh, but we got to see, uh, saw a couple of uh, sightings this year. Great, thank you. Now, if I wanted to visit a local village or a residential area, would I have to skip a safari to do that or would there be more time to do that later? So the thing is, uh, right now we are get. Uh, I mean, just now we got a news today itself, today morning, that on Wednesdays, uh, generally on Wednesday there was a half day. Like morning there was a safari, and afternoon the park used to be closed. But right now there is a news. A news came up that the Wednesday the full park would be closed. That's the reason why we use Wednesdays as the travel day. So Wednesday morning. We have a very short time for safari, maybe an hour or a couple of hours maximum. So people who want to skip that safari, they can go for a village visit. But right now, if the full day is closed, we might change into uh, the village visit for everyone. But that doesn't uh, that didn't fix yet. Great. Thank you for addressing that. Unfortunately, that's going to be the last question that we do have time for today. So I'm going to throw it back to you for any closing comments you may have for us. Well, sure. <laughs> uh, closing comments, Vince. Uh, I, I, I just I wish I could hear all of you uh, and be in front of you to explain, to talk to you, to listen to all of your stories that where all of you have traveled, because that's how I get more uh, enthusiastic about knowing the wildlife around the world. And uh, so I'll definitely say do visit. Um, it will be it will be one of your best uh, trip. I, I can assure you that. Thank you so much. 
for joining in uh, join uh, joining uh, today and thank you so much rob arpita thank you for taking the time to present for us today and i would also like to thank everyone who tuned in today now if you're interested in information on how you could travel with nathab give us a call at the number on your screen or you can send us an email at info at nathab.com. Our adventure specialists are happy to help you out. Join us Tuesday for our next Daily Dose of Nature. You can check out next week's lineup, including registration links, on our website at nathab.com slash webinars. We did record today's presentation, and we will have the replay available on our website soon. With that, I will conclude the webinar. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you next time.